um, our kids are watching. They're watching all this happen, especially the fact that it's happening across our area. So what's the best way to talk to them about it? We want to bring in Dr. George James from Thomas, and Je Thomas Jefferson University uh, joining us now. Good morning. Good morning, Alex and Mike. Uh, so let's first start with uh, the fact that it's important first that we even have the conversation, right? Don't just try to say they're too young or I ignore it. You know, one of the, the biggest things is that as parents, guardians, uh, godparents, you have to face your own anxiety about talking about racism. It can feel like a hard topic or a difficult topic. Will you get it right? Will you say the right thing? But you have to be able to face that and say that it's necessary to talk about it that you have to talk about it. And then once you can face that part, then you can move forward and actually have the conversation or series of conversations with the young folks that are in your life. Let's kind of break it down into maybe age groups um, and how specific mm -hmm. you might get. Would you talk about the, the unrest? And is it because the kids sometimes, as much as you try to keep them away from the TV, they're seeing people running through the streets and windows being smashed and stuff like that. Do you break it down with all the different Im images and then we'll get into age? Yeah, I think no, no matter what, you want to be honest and open with your child and, or children about what's going on, about injustice, about racism. The difference is that you try to find age appropriate language. And you know, to your point, what happens is that children see or hear what's going on. Sometimes they see what's on our televisions, our sets, or they hear what we're talking about. Sometimes mm -hmm. th this invokes a lot of passion for people. So you think you're in another room and your child oh, or no, children hear. don't hear you, but they hear <laughs> and they hear all the words. So that's why it's so, so important to then have conversations with them so that they're just not confused. And that's that's the important thing when it comes to being confused. And and is it, it should it be something that we give them something to read? Should it be that we just sit down and turn everything off and talk? You want to find things that will help you have the conversation. All right. So sometimes that could be uh, having moments where you just sit down and talk about it, asking them uh, to to tell you their to ask their questions, or even find resources. Uh, NPR and Sesame Street put together how to talk to your children about racism. They did a podcast about 20 minutes. You could do that, or even. Here in Philadelphia, the Children's Community School put a list of resources. So you can find different things that might help you. Also, I think it's important to, to have books of different cultures, or if you're a family of color that has books of your color, uh, of your family, uh, that will help you to talk about uh, racism, injustice, or how to talk about these things. There are books of all different backgrounds that will help you to have these conversations. One thing that worked for me over the years, or maybe it has worked. I don't, I'm not sure I have to talk to my daughters that would just, we would just simply watch TV and not have a, all right, everybody sit down. I'm going to talk to you about the birds and the bees and, stuff, and just let them happen, let it happen organically as you're watching TV. The comments you make will express to them the way you feel. And another thing is listen to them. Yeah, it's definitely important to do that. One of the things that I love about my own children's school, they had, they talked about uh, Goldilocks in five different cultures. Right, so it allowed us to have conversations about culture, about difference, about what they are learning. And then from there, you can now take it to a deeper conversation about injustice, about how people can be treated unfairly just because of how they look. And being able to have those conversations over and over can allow your child or children to feel safe, to feel that they can come to you as their parent and know what to do when they go forward. And should it be more than um, just a talk? Should it be maybe going to do activities where they can and learn different things or go out in the community and volunteer or with the cleanups that have been going on, go out and help clean up? I think all of that is great. <clears throat> the biggest thing that a parent or, or parents can do is to model the behavior. What are you reading? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? What are you doing? Right. That it, it's, it's to go beyond just feeling bad, but to move to action. And that if you are doing something, if you are volunteering, if you are uh, doing things in different communities, if you're showing that to your child young at a young age, they will see that. They will embody that. They will want to do that throughout their lives. Do you have friends of different cultures? Do you connect with your coworkers? What are you doing in your own life? And your children will see that. Yeah. They do model our behavior, don't they, doctor? They do. Good mm -hmm. or bad. Good or bad. Oh, it's good to see you. Thank you, doctor. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. You. He's a calming man, isn't he? Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> I like him. Oh, we have an update on the space mystery we've been talking about. A new study is giving us more insight on the first known interstellar object spot.